So, University of Michigan uh, playing some pretty damn good basketball. They took on Indiana over the weekend, and probably my favorite shot took place at practice the day before. <laughs> Jawan Howard over the shoulder, half-court shot, nothing but net. Um, and is there anything Jawan Howard can't do right now? Adam's got that video, and w watch this. The fans kind of suck, a little stiff, but, you know, whatever. <laughs> hey, at first, I was like, why is there so many fans in there? Like, it looked legit. They're all cardboard cutouts. Look at this. Boom. Look, no reaction, too. Just like, all right, I did it again. Yeah, uh, <laughs> and they did. They did do it again. They beat Indiana on Saturday, and now Michigan, uh, they got a game coming up tomorrow against Illinois, number five-ranked Illinois. That is going to be a big test. But, I mean, can we just say Michigan is the best team in the country right now? Is that an argument that everybody on this panel is willing to make? I think they're playing some of the best basketball I've seen from them in quite some time, even under John Beeline. Right now, do you know if Michigan like continues the way they're playing right now? Th just wrote this down. This will be Jawan Howard will be the first Michigan coach to finish the Big Ten with less than two, less than two, um, less than two losses. Wow, the first ever. Yeah, because they because there's all, they've always had at least two losses in the conference. If they if he finishes out, they'll be like they'll have only have one loss in the conference and on the season. But isn't this a shortened season for them? Like it, it is a short. Okay. I said it is a shortened season. It's a fun stat, but, but yeah, it's a shortened season. But hey, he did he's it. St he's still doing it, right? You got to do <laughs> everybody, it. And everybody's agreed to the. Uh, to the season, so. Well, with Baylor falling off this weekend, Michigan yeah. has moved up to the number two team in the country behind Gonzaga. And honestly, when you look at Gonzaga's strength of schedule compared to Michigan's or literally anybody in the Big Ten, like I was writing down some notes about the Big Ten. Uh, let's see. Bi eight Big Ten schools are in the top th – or all 14 Big Ten schools are in the top 30 for strength of schedule. All 14 schools. That means there's only 16 other schools in the nation in the top 30 with strength of schedule. Uh, and the Big Ten is looking to have eight of those 14 schools in the NCAA tournament. You ready the, for this crazy stat? Since December 26th, Gonzaga has not played a ranked team, and that was 15th team in the country that they played. That's so, what I'm saying. They have a cakewalk of a schedule. Cakewalk. So I mean, it's like you compare the two. I mean, yeah, Gonzaga's undefeated right now, but – you look at Michigan, you look at their strength, the schedule, I am no doubt putting Michigan at number one. The Big Ten is the toughest basketball conference in the country. Yeah, for it's sure. It's like literally. Sure. So Michigan's, the path that they're going through in the competition that they're facing, anybody else in the car, and, um, when, they, when they make it to the tournament could honestly be a cakewalk for them. Yeah, I, honestly, the way they've been playing right now, I don't see anybody that can get on their level. I mean, we thought Luca Garza was going to give them some trouble with Hunter Dickinson. Did not happen. Did not, not happen. Not at all. Um, Indiana, we didn't think that would be trouble. You thought Ohio State was going to give them some issues. They took care of Ohio State. I'm interested to see this Illinois matchup tomorrow night because Illinois is highly ranked as well. But I just don't see anybody having the firepower to stick with these guys. And if you look at their leading score, scorers throughout the entire season like it's it's so spread out it's livers you know it's wagner it's dickinson it's it's brown that they don't have one guy that you can hone in on every single game kind of reminds you a little bit of like the old ford pistons where someone's gonna light you up you just don't know who it's gonna be that night it's a team game they sharing that ball and they just look so polished on offense like that's the one thing I've noticed from them. They're really polished, and they just move the ball so well. So, I mean, that's why, it's, that's why they look like that. Yeah. I love that you bring up that Michigan is playing Illinois because there's been so much of this, like, head-on-head -head, like competition throughout Michigan and Michigan State right now where we beat a team, then they'd beat the team. In this one, they already beat Illinois, so now we got to see if we could beat Illinois. Yeah, <laughs> um, and you better hope Michigan doesn't fall into the quote-unquote trap game, too. Shout-out <laughs> yeah. to my boy Anson. Because if you're looking forward to Michigan State and not really focused on Illinois, that's going to cost you. It definitely will because that back, both of those games, the rivalry games, are going to be back-to-back, -back and they're going to be really high-intensity games. So I don't think they're going to be overlooking Illinois, though. I think they're going to come to that game well-prepared because they already know what's at, what lies ahead of them and what's – at stake if they were to lose this game. Um, growing up, were you guys Michigan basketball fans or Michigan State basketball fans? Anybody? I was always mm. Michigan up until, for some reason, Kalen Lucas because my brother was really good friends with him. 
So when Kalen Lucas went to play at State, where did, where did, where did he go to high school? Uh, St. Mary's. That's right. But my brother was really good friends with him. So then when he went to State, that was kind of my first, the first time where I was like, you know what? I actually like Michigan State basketball. And that's when I kind of was just opened up to both of them at that point. I've always just really just like Michigan as a school. So I just kind of, you know, was really always partial to their basketball team, whatever. But I did love, you know, love was in the respect with who Tom Izzo is. Yeah. See, I kind of grew up in this sweet spot where when I was a kid, the Fab Five was around. So immediately everybody loved Michigan. Uh, Michigan. But then in the year 2000, I was a freshman in college and Michigan State won the national championship. And I drove up to uh, East Lansing and partied in Cedar Village. So I loved both basketball programs throughout my entire life. And I, I always root for both teams. But right now, it just seems like Michigan is on a roll like it seems like remember a couple years ago when Michigan State was competing for Big Ten championships in football and it was like damn what is this program ever gonna fall off right I feel like Michigan's in that mode right now in basketball and I don't think it's gonna stop anytime soon I think Juwan Howard has really turned the program around into a basketball school and this is not even the his best recruits like his he is gonna have one of the top class coming in next year Three all-americans so it's not going. I don't know when it's going to stop. And him having early success, that's only going to attract more recruits down the line. So hey. when do you think they up a Jawan Howard's contract? Because right now his contract is not a very big one in the scheme mm. of college basketball. When do you think they re-sign him for like that ten-year, hundred million dollar deal? If they, if they get to an elite eight or pat or especially a final four, but I think if they get to an elite eight, they'll they'll re-up it. And that's the thing is like you look at Juwan Howard and, and the program that he's instilled in his short time at Ann Arbor with Michigan. Like you look across the league, there's not really many programs right now that if I was a the best basketball player in the nation, that I would say, hmm, I want I want to go there. Like Michigan really would be that number one. I might be a little bit biased, but you look at that program with Juwan Howard and the incoming class that he has, this is gonna be a dangerous future for Michigan. They also just look fun to watch. Yeah, I mean, they just just they're, the way he has them playing. They just look really loose and fun to watch. So I, I think that'll also be attractive to recruits as well. Yeah, and then and then we were talking about that too. Like, the, is the Izzo style of coaching now kind of dead on these types of players? Because you know these kids, I don't want to say they've been coddled, but. They're definitely serviced a lot more than the old players used to be. It used to be, you play for me, grind your ass, you know, that type of... And that's what Izzo does. You see him yelling at players, but he brings the best out of them. Yeah. But do players of this age really want to go play for someone like that when you could play with Jawan Howard, who's shooting three-pointers or shooting half-court shots over his back, helping you off the floor, building you up in that way. And it's going to be interesting to see how this plays out over the next couple years. I think it's a changing of the guard because every, you know the players are evolving and you know communication evolves. Jawan Howard is more in tune with these type of players that are coming up. Because he's come, he actually comes from their backgrounds and know what their aspirations are because he's been an NBA player. He's been, um, he's won a championship. He's been to the mountaintop. So him being able to go in there and speak to them on their level and just being able to have the credentials to back it up, I think that's going to hit more home now and especially with the style of play. Right. The crazy part when you look at Coach Howard is how many coaches have we had throughout our careers of, of just playing ball in our own lives, have you had a coach where you're like, yeah, I respected his game, and that's pretty much it. Yeah, he was really good at being a friend, and yeah, this and that. With Coach Howard, I feel like there's every single aspect in that guy. And as a player, it's a no-brainer that you want to be around that guy because of what he's going to just instill in your future. Right. Well, I hope Michigan wins tomorrow against Illinois, so that way the matchup on Thursday against Michigan State means even more in the scheme of things for the NCAA. Uh, so that's some big things happening with Michigan, Michigan State. They had a rough time yesterday. Um, and if they don't win these couple games against Michigan and have a great showing in the Big Ten tournament, it, it may be curtains for them in the NCAA tournament this year. I, I just... It's just hard to imagine a tournament without the Spartans. Right. Like, I just I, – I would have to see it to believe it. So, until it actually happens, I'm, all, I'm just going to go in with the mindset that they'll be in there. I just, I just – it's just hard for me to picture a tournament without them in there. Yeah. You know what would be hard for me to picture? Giving up $20 million. <laughs> and there's somebody that's willing to do that just walking Foolish. away. 
Uh, we're going to talk about that coming up next. But we got some big news. It's happening today. Our third live show on the Woodward Sports Network. It's called The Hook. It's got Darren McCarty. It's got Pilar, Maz, and of course, Art, the infamous Art. Um, Adam, let's play that video. This is a little bit of a preview of what you guys have to look forward coming today at 3 o'clock right here on the Woodward Sports Network. Hi, I'm Darren McCurdy. I'm Pilar Lastra. I'm Tom Mazaway. Make sure you're checking out Detroit's newest sports show, The Hook, weekdays 3 to 5 p.m. here on Woodward Sports Network. You can catch us on YouTube, Facebook, or any social media platform out there. And don't forget our app, Woodward Sports Network, on your app store. Come check us out, Woodward Sports Network, in the afternoon. Love it. Absolutely love it. That's going to be such a fun show, man. Uh, so this afternoon...